Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about role of cyclic AMP in release of fatty acids. Few of the hormones like epinephrine and neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, even another hormone glucagon, all these are going to influence the release of free fatty acids. These mediators are mainly increasing the cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP acts as an important secondary messenger which is responsible for the lipolysis. So cyclic AMP can activate few of the protein kinases which can convert the triglycerides into free fatty acids. In this way, sympathetic system increases the lipolysis. Even glucagon can also increase the lipolysis. On the other hand, insulin can inhibit the lipolysis. Insulin is going to inhibit the cyclic AMP activity thereby it inhibits the conversion of triglycerides into free fatty acids. So today in this video let us see how this cyclic AMP can convert the triglycerides into free fatty acids. Sympathetic system can act through the beta receptors. These beta receptors are G protein coupled receptors. They are associated with the alpha, beta, gamma subunits. And when the epinephrine binds to these beta receptors, they are going to be activated and they stimulate adenylyl cyclase system. This adenylyl cyclase is one of the important enzyme which can convert the ATP into cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP then activates the protein kinase A which are playing an important role in controlling the many of the cellular functions. So here they can control the lipolysis by activation of few of the enzymes. These enzymes are responsive towards the hormones so they are called as hormone sensitive lipase B but in the form of B it is inactive. Now this protein kinase A can convert the hormone sensitive lipase B form into the hormone sensitive lipase A form which is the active form of this enzyme. Now when this uh, hormone sensitive lipase is activated it can cleave the triglycerides into free fatty acids. Now triglycerides are made up of three fatty acids along with the glycerin each fatty acid is going to be removed such that the free fatty acids are going to be released. Since it is made up of glycerin and three molecules of fatty acid, they are called as triglycerides. Now these triglycerides can be converted into free fatty acids by the HSLA, hormone sensitive lipase A, such that one of the fatty acid is going to be released and they are going to form initially DAG, diacylglycerol. Now this diacylglycerol is having the two fatty acids and one of the fatty acid is going to be released as a free form. Then again one of the fatty acid is going to be released from this DAG by the same enzyme HSL such that it is going to form the MAG monoacylglycerol. But here this acyl moiety is attached at the second position so it is called as 2 monoacylglycerol. And finally another enzyme 2 monoacylglycerol lipase can act on the MAG such that the third fatty acid is also going to be released. So here it forms glycerol as well as free fatty acid. In this way, the three molecules of fatty acids are released as free fatty acids within the lipolysis through the hormone sensitive lipase enzyme. But this HSLA is going to be activated by protein kinase A. And this protein kinase A is sensitive towards the cyclic AMP. In this way, Hormones like epinephrine, glucagon can stimulate the adenylyl cyclase system and they can increase the intracellular cyclic AMP levels which can increase the lipolysis. But how insulin acts? Insulin acts quite oppositely to the epinephrine. Here the important enzyme is the hormone sensitive lipase A enzyme which is again reconverted into inactive form by one of the enzyme lipase phosphatase enzyme. This lipase phosphatase enzyme is going to be stimulated by insulin. Therefore, insulin produces the inactivation of the hormone sensitive lipase A enzyme. Therefore, it can inhibit the lipolysis. Now, let us see how this lipolysis is controlled by other mediators. We have already seen that ATP is going to be converted into cyclic AMP, and here one of the important enzyme is the adenylyl cyclase system. And this cyclic AMP is responsible for the activation of the protein kinases which, which activate the hormone sensitive to lipase leading to lipolysis. So cyclic AMP is important for the lipolysis. But here within the cytoplasm, the cyclic AMP can be converted into metabolites like the 5-AMP 
by one of the enzyme phosphodiesterase. So phosphodiesterase can control the repolysis by metabolism of the cyclic AMP. And we know few of the drugs like methylxanthines such as caffeine, theophylline and theobromine, they can inhibit the phosphodiesterase enzyme activity, thereby they can increase the lipolysis. Similarly, insulin acts quite oppositely. Insulin can stimulate the activity of the phosphodiesterase enzyme such that cyclic AMP is converted into its metabolites, therefore lipolysis can be controlled. In this way, insulin can control the lipolysis by inactivation of the lipase enzyme as well as by metabolism of the cyclic AMP. And apart from these mediators, few of the mediators like the adenosine as well as the end product of the lipolysis that is a free fatty acids, they can inhibit the adenylyl cyclase activity, thereby they can control the lipolysis. In this way, conversion of triglycerides into free fatty acids is controlled by several types of mediators. But most of the mediators act through the cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP plays an important role in the lipolysis where it activates the protein kinase A which are going to further activate the hormone sense to lipase enzymes. So mediators like epinephrine, norepinephrine, glucagon can increase the lipolysis whereas insulin can inhibit the lipolysis. Similarly, few of the mediators like adenosine can control the adenylyl cyclase activity and even free fatty acids can also produce auto inhibition such that they can control the lipolysis. And few of the drugs like methylxanthines can inhibit the metabolism of phosphodiesterase enzyme which increase the cyclic AMP activity resulting in the increased lipolysis. So that's about the role of cyclic AMP on conversion of triglycerides into free fatty acids. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.